potential causes of the change by showing correlations. That, that's why in geography we would never use just one single type of graph, but we look at lots of them alongside each other because they give you a fuller picture of the, of the actual results. Okay? I mean, if you look at your graphs there and you can see the pebble round is shown, the actual results, can you see a pattern in them? If you look at angular, the number one is the most angular type. You see mo most of that on the left-hand bank there, don't you? Whereas it, it tends to be less in the very middle and then it starts to increase again over to the right-hand bank. So what I'm saying to you is we're seeing a whole lot more velocity and erosion in the middle and that's causing our bed load to be rounder because of it. So that's a valid conclusion, isn't it? All right? Yep. So you've got isovel diagrams to present. You've got cumulative bar graphs to present bed load shape. You've got you know, a change over width to show the shape as well. There are lots of ways of doing it. Can you think of any other ways of presenting data as well as photographs as well? Spearman's right, Spearman's rank, it's very a nice, a nice way of, of checking your data. Um, it's a statistical analysis, a bit like a, cor um, a correlation, in that it gives you the strength of relationship between two variables. And I like it particularly because it, it tells you either it goes as, as low as minus 1 or as high as plus 1. And anything in the middle, if you were going to draw a correlation, is random. In other words, it doesn't tell you anything. If it's minus one, it's a negative correlation. If it's plus one, it's a positive correlation. And basically, what you can do, if you were, what would you suggest might affect the velocity in a meander? What, what? Give me a variable. Width. Width, right. So, would you expect width as width increases, or as you? Positive well, how, correlation. You would expect positive. Okay. So you might well, in your conclusion, say that's the width and velocity show this amount of correlation. Do you think the amount of rainfall the day before would affect your results, would affect yeah. the meander? Yeah. How? Different how full it is, because if it's wider at the top and less wide at the bottom, that depends how. It might increase velocity and therefore erosion, but it'll do it for the whole meander. Oh yes, it will. So I would say that you might find that weather might actually be a random. Can you think of a negative correlation? We looked at one earlier. Bad size and roundness. Right, bad load bed load size. size. I, you might expect that to maybe show quite a strong correlation. So at the end of it, you could, ha you could have lots of your variables on this, I call it a continuum, showing you what did have an effect on your meander. Okay? And this is done using Spearman's rank. This is done using Spearman's rank. But you can also back it up by producing the scatter graphs yourself. So you can see in an instant, I like it because it's visual, I can see which elements appear to be random, which areas appear to have a positive correlation, and also which variables seem to have a negative correlation. But it's showing you what might actually have caused the changes that you've seen. Okay. So that's Spearman's rank. It gives you the strength of the relationship and the direction. So in other words, the closer you get to one, the stronger the relationship. But according to which direction you go from zero, it tells you if it's positive or negative. What's the word as in it's not affected by humans? So it's like, you know, because sometimes data can be, I can't think of the word. You know, if it's affected by what you think. If, like it's, in the roundness. if it's objective mm -hmm. yes, it's, or so it subjective. Isn't, it isn't subjective. Yeah, objective is when things are more reliable. If, you're, if you have an objective opinion, it means you've looked at everything fairly. Whereas if you've got a subjective, it means like if somebody said to me, do you think geography is important? What do you think my answer is going to be? Yeah. Yes, because I have a very subjective view and, and therefore perception of geography. If I was asked, do you think physics is important? Hmm. But whereas they would say, yes, it's the most important thing ever, and I know they have. So subjectivity and objectivity is where you either allow your opinion to have an impact or you don't.
So this isn't. This isn't. This is done with equipment. This is done with something that has no opinion. A meter rule will always measure the true depth of a river, no matter if it's a conservative, de liberal Democrat, Labour, mm. physics lover, geography lover, Chelsea lover, whatever. Okay. Or Whereas it be a problem with bed flow around this that it is subjective. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what would it be if there was loads of people judging? If there was, the more people you introduce into that decision making, the more reliable it becomes because you're taking a, a, quite a bank of opinions to make one. Whereas if it's just me, then that is more subject to skews and my experience of looking at rivers over the years compared to maybe your experience of only looking at one. Two. Two. And this one, of course, which was a lovely sunny day, wasn't it? Beautiful day. Really nice. Okay. So it is subjective. Some things, bed load shape is subjective, whereas bed load size isn't, because it was done up mm. against with a long profile against a ruler. Mm. All right. So you could put on how to improve. You could say mm. that we that bed load roundness is subjective. So to improve, we could ask more people and then find an average. Exactly. Or just take a, a greater sample size. Um, another way, we'll, we'll look at how to improve it and how to evaluate it now as well, because that's one of your questions that said, um, summarise and evaluate the conclusions of your personal research. So to evaluate this piece of work, you could, because maybe this river, maybe this meander is a very odd meander, maybe there's no other meander in the world like it. So how could you make sure that you carried out a study correctly Will you go and study other meanders and compare your results to those? Or you come back a couple of months later and see if this meander changes in the winter time or in the summer time or after a very heavy period of rainfall. That's how to make it better. Okay? Or you introduce more people into those subjective opinion questions. Or you use more accurate equipment like we did after GCSE we no longer used the cork and the stopwatch we now use a flow meter or rather than using a, a, a bog standard classroom clinometer you use a I, I said the word earlier they begin with TH <laughs> We're trying to describe <laughs> civil engineering equipment that you that pe surveyors use to look at angles. I'm thinking trilobite, but I know it's not right. Yeah. It's no, oh. it's a fossil. I know it is. That's, ah. that's why I know it's not right. <laughs> I looked it up earlier. Just like the, uh, the you know what I mean? Thing I'm good at. That thing <laughs> on a tripod with legs and a little lens. They all look very, Im we very all, important. Should we just make a name up, are <laughs> Yeah, I, I will come up they'll, with it. They'll, they'll read all of us. Be like, oh, <laughs> this, must be a, this must be a thing. So how else could you improve this study if you had to evaluate it? More sites. More sites. So, okay. More sites is a big one. Or the same site done over different times of the year. Um, more people, bigger sample size. Uh, a time after heavy rainfall, maybe also do it during a time of drought to see how it's, the process has changed the land form. Um, I think maybe after a time of flood might be particularly useful because you can see what ha has your meander actually changed shape. As you would expect it to, you would expect that river cliff to have extended further inland as the centrifugal force causes more erosion. Different season. Yeah. All right. There are quite a lot of questions about how you can improve it, but the other questions are about how. Tell me about how your your methods of, of your methods of data collection. How were they useful? Um, are your methods of data presentation again? You know, be critical of those. Again, they've mentioned methods of obtaining information um, and other other investigations. So that's as much as they can ask and have asked in the past about your investigation. Is there anything else you'd like me to go over before we finish this session? How much do you reckon on the 50 mark? How many pages? 
Well, you're going to have half an hour to answer this. I would expect what? three pages. Half an hour to answer part B? Yes. And 15 for part A. And 15 for part A. Okay. So remember, in geography, please, please remember that you can answer questions visually as well as with text. So, you know, draw diagrams, draw an annotation of a photograph and explain how it's useful. Draw, uh, I mean, we didn't mention line graphs earlier. That's simple. It shows a, a nice, easy to understand change over distance. So you've got your river and you've got your velocity. That shows at the middle section it seemed to have a faster velocity. That's a, that's a line graph. That's simple. Um, but again, it doesn't. What it, what's not good about it is it doesn't suggest reasons for the change the way a scatter graph might. It just shows a change. Okay. Just as if you were looking at depth, yes, it shows you the shape of the river, but it doesn't tell you again what's what's caused it. And that's why you put in an isovel diagram does. Okay. How does a scatter graph show it? Show. Um, suggestions yeah. for that change because you're putting one variable against another so if you were to put velocity against depth then that might that's going to say funny how, how come whenever it's deeper it's also faster well that's because it has less friction acting on the water therefore it's allowed to be more efficient in its flow so it shows a suggestion of it shows a suggestion of of a reason for that change Okay, so that's your very final question about the, the study of the meander itself. The first part of your question, as we've said, is about other investigation techniques. All right, it might be the use of ICT. Um, I always say this every year because it's true. Just imagine me, you've mentioned earlier, with all my gadgets around me. Well, we can use all of these from Word and Excel, PowerPoint to show you where the river is, Google Earth to show you the river in detail or historically what it was like before, GPS on my iPhone or your iPhone because you were there too to actually exactly locate where that meander is. Why would we use PowerPoint? PowerPoint, when you come back or even before the trip, I'm showing you where we're going using images I put into PowerPoint. You, why would you use because you, everybody needs to have the same idea of how we're going to do this, so I'm showing you images of a method. Or Word to do your data collection sheets, Excel to do your graphs. Would we have done them ourselves? Yes, you did. Do you remember? Isovel diagrams can be done on Excel using contour mapping. I've done that myself on, on Kate's field work showing hot spots. Of <laughs> All right, so there's lots of different things. But remember, I would suggest, just as we finish this bit, use your experience of all fieldwork in geography, okay? Be it in year 10 or 12 or anything else, even in geology, just to hit everything possible. It is mostly the same as the one we did last. It is, exactly. Um, apart from the conclusions, really. Exactly. exactly. So it's not a massive jump into the unknown at all, is it? It's just a little a little jump, a little skip. Okay? Yes. So we'll, we'll finish this theme and then we'll go back to just taking some general questions about the exam tomorrow. Yeah. But thank you for listening. Thank you. It's okay. Potato. <laughs>